He flipped open his menu, scanned it, and then slapped it down, his head tilted. Do I look familiar to you at all? I shook my head, suddenly embarrassed. Have we met before? I have the worst memory. Nothing? Really? He leaned in closer. I assumed so I could inspect his face. His small, deep blue eyes danced above the lit votive on the table. I noticed his face had an unintentional tan, like he worked in a garden. And he had at least a day's worth of blonde stubble. Or was it gray? At that moment, in the light, something did seem familiar. Nope. But that was a lie. I hate this moment. He rubbed his legs, looking nervous. I go about 30 years hating this moment, and then you call me and we do this all over again. He circled his slender forefinger to illustrate. I just haven't seen you in a long time. I'm sorry, I call you? Uh-huh. The first time was 1895 in France. He paused. Actually, that was your mother, but we don't need to get technical about it. My mother? I was envisioning Margie Connor, my mother, who was at this very moment guzzling box wine and gobbling smoked Gouda cheese bits at her book club in Bethesda. This month, they were revisiting the Poisonwood Bible. Then there was Los Angeles in 1935. Last time was Taos in 1970. Honestly, I wish you'd come back in Venice or somewhere a little more interesting. I mean, this Washington place is a swamp. He scowled. I know you see a resemblance to Paris here, but... His voice drifted off, and he casually settled back into the banquette like he'd just told me about his day at the office. I exhaled loud enough to inadvertently catch the attention of the man at the next table. Let me get this clear. I called you in 1895? I placed my napkin on the table and eyed my jacket. Finally, I stood up. Mr. Varner, I'm sorry. You must have me confused with someone else. Helen, he said with an authority that surprised me. I'm really not good at this, but theatrics are childish. Sit down. Sit down? I leaned in, placing my hands on the table. You're a lunatic, Mr. Varner. I don't know you. I'm 33 years old, not a 100. I've never met you in France, or anywhere else for that matter. And my mother? She works for the National Institutes of Health. She did not call you in 1895, I assure you. Helen, his voice quieted. Sit down. And for some strange reason, I obeyed, lowering myself onto my chair like a child. We sat there looking at each other. Throughout the bar, the candles on the tables were like little street lamps, and I felt something familiar. Then it hit me. Gaslights? I shook my head to ward off the clear image of this man's weathered face illuminated under a gaslight. The images in my head moved quickly, like flashes, this man smiling at me while we went down a wide boulevard in a carriage, the sound of purposeful hooves hitting pavement, the lights around us shining, brightening his face in a sepia-toned wash the way a flashlight does when you shine it under the covers. His clothes were strangely out of place, almost like he was wearing a Victorian costume, and the setting was all wrong. I swayed in my chair, gripping the table with both hands, and then turned and looked out the window. Even the trees outside, swaying slightly in the breeze and lined with string lights, were conspiratorially twinkling, making his face glow mysteriously from another time, like a tragic character from a Shelley poem. He pushed the menu away. You called me a little while ago and asked me to do something for you, and I did it. I began to protest, but he held up his hand. Helen, really? We both know what I'm talking about, don't we? And I did.